Fourth Meeting, Wednesday, June 12th, 1974. Questions and Answers First Question, Man 1. Yesterday you said that it is difficult to get rid of anger. You said that you would speak about it so that we could understand it better. Please, would you explain it further today? Answer. Try to see the fault of anger. Then you will be able to drive it away. When other people show that they are angry with you, you do not like it and you see it as bad. And when you are angry with others, your behavior and attitude are bad, so the results are also bad. But it is probable that you yourself will not feel that your anger is bad. Usually, if you know that something is bad and dangerous to yourself, in the future you will not do it. But if you think that it is good, or if you do not consider the fault of it, and go on doing it because you give way to the emotion of anger, you will not be able to get rid of the anger. In fact, this will only increase your anger and make it stronger so that it will constantly harass you and bring trouble and harm to others. Second question, Man 2. Sometimes is it not appropriate for us to show some anger? Answer. Anger is hot, but people tend to think that it is good and so like to display it. If somebody does something against your wishes, you become angry. If you do not control your emotions, they get stronger and stronger. Have you ever felt that you get angry with yourself because you do something which does not keep up with the speed of your own mind? The feeling of anger makes you troubled, hot, not calm and cool, and the characteristics that display anger are not pleasant to see. Letting go and allowing anger to arise continually without in any way trying to quell it or get rid of it leads to it becoming part of your character. When this tendency keeps increasing, from where will you get peace of mind? If anger were beneficial and could be used like fertilizer for a tree, you should be angry only when you want to fertilize the tree. But since you cannot control anger and use it like a fertilizer, it is not appropriate to display it at all. Third question, Man 2. If we have been treated unjustly, for instance, if we are blamed when we have done nothing wrong, what should we do? Answer. You should act appropriately with reason. The Lord said that to act in any way which is led by greed, hate, or delusion is bad. If you release your mad emotions and do harm to others when they accuse you wrongly, then having been good, you will also become bad, which is a bad thing for all people who are concerned about virtue. If you want to be a good person, you must hold back and refrain from anger. Search and think out a way that is suitable for you to act towards whoever has done wrong to you, without venting your anger and acting in such a way that you become a bad person like the person who has done wrong to you. Fourth question, Man 2. If we are angry and do not show it, the other person may not be aware that we are angry. Shouldn't we react to what they are doing with a show of anger, so that they do not act in that way again? Answer. Displaying anger is not a good thing, so you should think out and look for a good way of talking together in terms of causes and effects. Then you can attain valuable results without arousing anything blameworthy following from the initial trouble. If there is discussion without the emotion of anger, you do not bring madness into your speech, so the other party is likely to understand and be able to accept and agree willingly to do what you want. The incident will then improve and not flare up and get worse, like using clean water to wash dirty things. You can wash them clean instead of making them more and more dirty. Displaying a demonic face, as you mentioned, is not a proper human attitude because you become demonic as well. Fifth question, Man 3. If we do not show any reaction, how will we be able to restrain ourselves? Answer. If you restrain your heart, you can restrain yourself. But generally, people do not restrain themselves because they like to release their emotions. Scarcely anybody is interested in patiently restraining their own anger. You must examine yourself like this. What is it that I like or dislike? What the other person does to me makes me angry, but I restrain myself and do not display any abnormal behavior investigating the way they feel so as to find out if I have done anything that would make them angry, I cannot recall anything that I may have done wrong. 
Perhaps they are in the wrong, but I am not. They make a show of anger, but I do not. Their heart is troubled and hot within them, and other people will see for themselves that they are bad, but I do nothing bad. Because you do not show any reaction by answering them back, you increasingly become an admirable person. Nobody admires a person who gets angry, saying that he is good because he is clever at getting angry. When you get angry with someone, who is going to admire this and say that you are good because you can get angry with this or that person? Anger is not a good thing, so people everywhere in the world are afraid of it and tired of it. Even animals recognize anger and quickly try to avoid it or hide from it. They are afraid of anger, which is a poison more harmful than fire. Anger should therefore not be encouraged. In fact, you should look for a way to quench it until there is none left. Sixth question. Woman 1. Why is it that when we meet certain people for the first time, we immediately feel that we like them or dislike them, even though they have not yet done anything to us? Answer. Anyone who is not dead is likely to have such feelings. Therefore, it is normal to have feelings of liking or disliking when you see people, and there is nothing harmful in this. The nature of people throughout the world who have gilesas is usually like this. As long as you do not show it outwardly, it will be almost as if nothing has happened. Seventh question, man two. Is it better to immediately throw off the dislike for someone, or to develop friendly feelings, metta, towards them? Answer. If you can throw off the dislike, this is good, or if you can develop metta towards them, that is also good. But generally people do neither, for they go and do things that they should not do. When you feel anger and dislike for someone, if you see the fault is within yourself because it makes you feel uneasy in your heart, you can get rid of that angry feeling entirely. So, to go straight to the point, you must, before all else, examine your own faults, both the ones that have occurred in the past and those that are present now, in order to get rid of your feelings of anger towards others. At first, when you begin to practice this form of tamma, you do not understand yourself. You have only feelings about external things and your likes and dislikes of them. When you begin to observe other people, you see how people display the characteristics of anger and you don't like it, so you try not to display such characteristics towards other people. Acting in this way, you begin to understand your own jitta. Doing this often, your awareness of yourself and your jitta will also arise more quickly. Then, as soon as you are the recipient of someone else's display of anger, in whatever way it may come about, you know yourself and you can quell your emotions. In this way, you can get rid of your defilements, gilesas, little by little, and reduce the dukkha and anxiety in your own heart. Dissatisfaction with people is nothing but dukkha, which accords with the tamma that the Lord taught. But mostly we oppose tamma, which is right, good, and proper, so we generally find dukkha all the time without feeling any dread of it, which leads us to encounter dukkha again and again. Eighth question, woman two. How should we correct the anxiety and agitation that we experience due to an excessive concern for other people? Answer. Whatever you do or feel excessively is bad, so it is a cause of dukkha. If you are responsible for someone in a given situation, you should consider it circumspectly, trying to anticipate and correct any problems which may arise. Normally, if you do not think beyond what is happening in the present, it will be enough to keep you calm and prevent excessive agitation or anxiety from occurring. The word excessive should be understood to mean that which is beyond what is sufficient, and this always causes nothing but dukkha. Those who like to consider the basic meaning of tamma should always be aware of this. Ninth question, man three. When dislike arises, should we use the same method to get rid of it that you said should be used to get rid of anger? Answer. Yes, do it by whatever method gets rid of the disliking. Whichever method works, it will probably be correct for this purpose. Tenth question, woman three. 
In doing samadhi practice by walking jangama, how should we go about doing it correctly? Answer. Dhanajan Man suggested that there are three factors which should be adhered to. 1. Walk from east to west, or walk at an angle to the east-west line, so that the sun does not get in your eyes. 2. Once you set the jitta to do the work of meditation, then watch the jitta to make sure that it does only that work, and so prevent it from getting distracted and going elsewhere. You must look on that work as being the object of your attention. Aramana. For example, one method is to take the raising and lowering of your feet as the object. In that case, you must do just this method, because this is the work that you have set the jitta to do. If you prefer another method, fix your attention on the corresponding object of that method. 3. When contemplating tamma, you should continue until you reach the end of that aspect of tamma that you are contemplating making sure to have mindfulness associated with it in every bodily action and position. The various methods of practicing thamma do not in fact conflict with each other, but the person who practices is likely to be prejudiced and see his own method as being right while other people's methods have no value. So disagreements arise when one person claims, it is better to do it my way. Another person taking up that method may find it unsuitable to him because it is wrong and unsatisfactory for his temperament. When you take up and practice a method that other people have practiced with successful results, it can happen that you gain no good results for yourself. Therefore, the practice of tamma depends upon individual characteristics, upanissaya, for one person will prefer this method and another will prefer that method. Eleventh question, man two. If we have used one method for a long time, and later on someone comes and recommends another method, should we continue using our old method or not? Answer. If you have gained skill at using any given method, and if you are satisfied that you have gained the result of a calm and peaceful heart, you should go on using that method. The tamma object Aramanatamma, used in meditation, may eventually change as the jitta becomes more aware of itself. But to begin with, you must give the heart a basis to hold on to so that the jitta becomes calm. Later on, you may change the method you use, but the method that initially gave you good results is important, so you should hold on to it as the basis of your practice. You must not vacillate back and forth, listening readily and believing easily when someone says that this or that method is better, and following what they say even though you get no satisfactory results. Twelfth question, man four. The method of paying attention to the feeling of rising and falling of the abdomen as I breathe in and out gives rise to strange feelings. Why is this? Answer. If the jitta is firmly paying attention to the rising and falling of the abdomen, there is nothing to arouse such strange feelings, but when the jitta is off guard, it drifts away and gets involved with various distractions. You must make the jitta return to the original object of attention and do only the work associated with that object. If you release the jitta, letting it go continually wherever it likes, it will never stop deceiving you in all sorts of ways. Finally, you will be unable to find any firm basis or anchor for the jitta, so its foundation will become unstable. Thirteenth question, woman four. When doing anabhanasati, I keep my attention on the breath going in and out. But if I hear a sound from outside, the watching of the breath gets lost. I was told that if I heard any sound, I should think hearing, hearing, and then go on doing the practice, but I feel that it is difficult for me to enter samadhi. Answer. The method that you mentioned first is good, and there is no need to increase the burden more than necessary. In other words, get the jitta to stay with the in and out breathing. For the latter part of your question, the burden of the jitta is increased when, as soon as a sound is heard, the jitta must know, know, and then return to set up the practice as before. When something breaks into the practice often, your jitta will be too slow to keep up, so it will never be able to continue with the work that it should be doing. 
when you are a beginner at meditation, the jitta does not yet have much strength, so to greatly increase the burden of the jitta is not good. It is like getting a child to do work that must be gradually explained in each of its aspects. If you explain how to do too much of it all at once, the work will become too difficult. Then laziness will arise, causing the child to dawdle over the work. The jitta is much like this. Fourteenth question, woman two. Can we contemplate parts of the body while walking jangama? Answer. To begin with, you want to get the heart calm. When the heart has attained a state of calm, and then withdrawn from that calm state, you can focus the jitta to contemplate and develop understanding step by step. The nature of the contemplation may take the jitta away from that calm state, but at that point you must not be anxious about whether the jitta is calm or not. Simply press on further with the contemplation. The work of the jitta is done firstly for the attainment of calm and secondly for the elimination of the inner defilements, gilesas. Mindfulness, the faculty that controls the contemplation, is just as essential when contemplating to gain understanding about parts of the body as it is when doing samadhi practice to attain calm. In both cases, mindfulness must be present to supervise the work all the time. Fifteenth question, woman two. What do you mean by contemplation? Answer. Contemplation means continually investigating internally and externally for the purpose of getting rid of the defilements. It is the aspect of jitta pavana called vipassana, insight. Once you become skilled in contemplation, enthusiasm for doing the contemplation arises by itself. After doing vipassana for a long time, you will have to turn from it to rest the jitta, making the jitta calm by dwelling in samadhi for a while. So first you must practice samadhi for calming the jitta until you become skilled at it so as to increase the strength of the jitta enough to practice knowing with insight, vipassana jnana. After practicing vipassana for some time, you must use samadhi as the method of resting the jitta so that you can continue the contemplation until super-mindfulness, mahasati, and super-wisdom, mahabanya, arise. The jitta will then have courage and ability, along with mindfulness and wisdom, to get rid of the defilements, and these factors make up magga, the path. Having reached this stage, all laziness will disappear, allowing you to do jitta pawana until you forget all about time. Then you will be able to sit for long periods and attain results that are of high value. After sitting for a long time, you should then meditate while walking as a means of changing your posture. In this way, you use super-mindfulness and super-wisdom to go on curing doubts and problems until there are no more defilements left to cure. You will understand by yourself when the jitta and tamma have penetrated each other. This is how the way of practice can help to arouse knowledge and understanding of the jitta. The jitta is the very essence of a person. The jitta is what causes us to be born as human beings, with circumstances that are good or bad, high or low. Since the jitta is the chief cause, we must rely upon those things which influence the jitta for our future state. If we develop the jitta well, we can rise up until we reach the stage of sugato, one who has great happiness. But if the jitta accumulates bad things, even without knowing that they are bad, the results which one gets will be bad all the time. When we practice tamma well, a sense of well-being will arise in our hearts. Usually we do not know the reason why we receive dukkha, or when we will be free from it, because we are not aware that we have done bad things or when we did them. We just see the results of them which arise as dukkha at the present moment. We should always try to choose the work that the jitta does. Evil and akusala should be completely avoided. If we are used to doing bad things, we must try to find a way to abstain from doing them, and also find a way to promote what has value and what is good, even though it may be difficult to do. Using wisdom to drive us on, we gradually train ourselves like this until we become used to it. But lazy people and those who do not like what is good are no use at all because they have no wisdom to drive them on. When people love what is good, wisdom compels them to do good until the jitta is used to it. 
then results of calm, peace, and happiness will come. It may also happen that something strange and wonderful of a different kind arises spontaneously in the jitta. We are not normally acquainted with such wonderful things, but they will arise from the practice of what is good. The important thing is the practice of jitta pavana. As for the above good person, he has only virtue. He is not distracted, and he is not at cross-purposes with tamma, with other people, or with anything else in the world. But the person who does not yet have the power to control his mind and make his thoughts, speech, and actions always go in the right direction, the direction in which they should go, which leads to those results that bring happiness, must purify and cure his jitta using the methods of meditation practice that cause the bad things within him to disintegrate. Those things which are dignified and noble will then develop and increase in his heart, which by way of nature has a very high value. If you practice following the way that the Lord Buddha taught, you will become a wise person. Then, when you train your jitta, you will understand the nature of your own jitta better than anyone else. But if you practice following the way of someone who does not truly know, it will be like the blind foolishly leading the blind. You will be unable to walk the right way to reach your desired goal. If you are not prepared to let yourself be led by someone who truly does know the way, then the more you act in that way, the more stupid you become, so you will fail to see the good results that you expect. Cleverness must depend on mindfulness and wisdom to look for reasons and results. People in this world do not become good on their own without making any effort. They must rely upon learning, and they must have training in meditation. Training raises the jitta to a higher level. If you lack training, your jitta cannot go higher, because the defilements will pull the jitta down until it cannot escape. But the well-trained jitta can get rid of the gilesas and be transformed into something of the highest value.